late. Yeah, I know. I have to stop by the lab and check out those proofs on the mayor's press conference. You better get in there. He's having a bad day. Mr. Jameson, Peter's here. It's about time. I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Jameson. I got hung up at the lab. You have a special assignment up in Westchester, and it's something that concerns me personally. Now, sit down. Do you happen to remember the Harvey Kirkwood incident a couple of months ago? Yeah, sure. He was an arms manufacturer, right? And he got uh, killed in some kind of an accident? Yes. I knew Kirkwood. We belonged to the same clubs. He was kind of a hot-tempered guy. You know the type? Yeah, I sure do. Well, um, was there any kind of foul play? No, no. I'm convinced the accident was just that, an accident. But take a look at this. I got this letter from his widow, Lisa, last week. Does that look to you as though someone is trying to bilk her out of her money? She says here how the house is haunted by the spirit of her dead husband. Now, well, that's utter nonsense, but I'm afraid she's bought it. The Kirkwood fortune is set up in a living trust that Lisa controls. After her death, it all goes to charity, including a hefty share for the Associated Helping Hand. Your favorite charity? Well, that's beside the point. I happen to like the lady. She called me this morning. Sounded very confused and frightened. Half of her servants have quit because of this ghost business. She's going to sign the entire trust over to some business called the Psychic Research Institute, run by some man named Polarski, on Harvey's instructions. I convinced her that she should wait until you drove up to Kirkwood, took a look around. You'd better do it right away. I have a feeling that it's urgent. Why me? Well, you're a graduate student in physics. I figure you could spot a phony when you see one. And uh, there might be a story, huh? OK, I'll get on it right away. I know I can trust you to be tactful. This lady's been through an ordeal in the past few months. Don't worry, sir. I know you can hear me, Harvey Kirkwood. Please tell us what you want. Harvey! Why do you disturb me? It's Harvey's voice. We want to know why you have remained here. Why are you earthbound? Guns. Rifles. Revolvers, bullets. I can find no peace. No rest. My wealth was grounded in death. Men killing. Lisa. I'm here, Harvey. Release me. from the New York Daily Bugle. Oh, a newspaper man, huh? That's right. I have an appointment to see Mrs. Kirkwood. We don't care too much for newspaper people around here. I'm trying to help Mrs. Kirkwood if I can. Now, will you open the gate, please? OK, but you better be good to the missus. Hi. Now, this here road will take you right straight up to the big house. Don't wander around because the late Mr. Kirkwood kept part of the estate just like his own private zoo. And some of the animals roam free around the enclosure. Oh, that's terrific. Just stick to the main road. I'll do that.
Stop it. Behave yourself. Good dog. Mr. Parker, I'm Lisa Kirkwood. Peter. Mr. Jameson tells me you might be able to help. I'm just about at my wit's end. I don't know what's real and what isn't anymore. Yeah. This desk was in perfect order an hour ago. We heard noises and the maid came in and found it like this. I called Dr. Polarski immediately. This isn't the first time it's happened. And that isn't all. I discovered this. Now compare that with this letter of Harvey's. The handwriting's the same. I have no doubt. Well, it does look like the same handwriting, but I'm no expert. I've been researching the psychic field for over 30 years now. I try to gather enough data to substantiate any claim to paranormal phenomena. There is an abundance of evidence in this case. Such as? Four different witnesses have seen a light materialize over this chair. Well, Doctor, a light can be rigged. A note can be forged. I wish it were that simple to dismiss. But I'm afraid there's too much that's happened. Footsteps in the hall upstairs. Doors slamming in the middle of the night. Glasses broken. I haven't been able to sleep. My staff has left me. But I don't care. I'll do anything to help Harvey find peace. Oh, I'm certain we're all interested in the truth of this matter. Are you a believer, Mr. Parker? I try to keep an open mind. Perhaps you could help us get to the truth. How can Peter help? Well, he's a photographer. He could come back tomorrow and try to photograph the apparition. It might satisfy all remaining doubts. This is the film you requested, Peter. I personally haven't had a chance to try it, but uh, several photographers have had success with it in ghost hunting. Thanks, I'll let you in on the results. Good. It's a pretty impressive setup you've got here. Very few people realize the pains we go through to authenticate phenomena. We're about to conduct an experiment on a subject's ability to influence magnetic fields. You're welcome to observe if you wish. Oh, no, I, I really should be getting back up to Kirkwood. Oh. Dr. Davis. Yes. Do you believe in spirits? I'm not sure. Parapsychology is a young science. But tales of hauntings have been recorded for centuries. They represent a rich collection of phenomena that are not easy to ignore. Have you ever heard of an Anthony Polarski? Of the Psychic Research Institute? Mm. I don't know him personally. I met him three years ago at a colloquium. I found his book, um, Ghosts of Hudson Valley. Interesting. Do you think he's legitimate? Oh, I never heard anything to the contrary. But that doesn't mean I would vouch for him. I don't know his work well enough. I prefer phenomena that can be brought into the lab and tested under controlled conditions. Telepathy, psychokinesis, clairvoyance. Very few ghosts are willing to come to the laboratory and be tested. in an automobile accident at dusk. It still scares me when it gets close to that time. It's understandable, Lisa. It hasn't been that long. Oh, it, it isn't the length of time. It's just that I feel terribly guilty about it. Harvey and I didn't exactly have a harmonious marriage. In fact, we were fighting most of the time. Screaming and yelling at each other. Throwing things. I, I don't even remember what set it off. But he stormed out. Some men drink. 
others drive fast. But I can't help feeling that he'd still be alive if we hadn't had that last fight. He's here. Better see what's happening. Try not to be frightened, Mrs. Kirkwood. I'm trying, but it isn't easy. should take care of Mr. Parker. I just slipped while climbing down. What happened? I don't really know, but at least I got a couple of pictures. So there was something there? Yes, you were not hallucinating. Hallucinating? What you saw could have been a hallucination, caused telepathically and projected by yourself. Oh, but then I wouldn't have been able to photograph it. Correct. You have a number of theories in parapsychology to explain hauntings. 
None of them are very satisfactory. Dr. Davis, are these pictures from some other hauntings? I'd prefer to call them unexplained phenomena. One theory I find particularly interesting is that an object holds on to psychic impressions, and a sensitive person can touch it and receive those impressions. Psychometry. Well, if an object can do this, then perhaps a room or a whole house can retain the impressions of an individual, like Harvey Kirkwood. No, the force I felt was much too strong to be any kind of impression. Doctor, is it possible that these effects could be faked? <laughs> oh, they're totally a fraud. Done with lights and a projector. Hmm. Well, then how about mine? Do you think they're authentic? Look here. This pattern in the light, too intense. And these beams could have been projected. But it's impossible to tell for certain. Your Kirkwood haunting uh, bears further investigation. You're supposed to be a scientist and you bring me back pictures of ghosts. Well, what if she isn't being taken? Are you trying to tell me that that ghost is for real? No, I'm not telling you it's for real. Well, of course it isn't for real because there isn't any such thing. I'm just saying that there is phenomenon here that is worth looking into. What phenomenon? Have you gone crazy? Mr. Jameson, there is an entire department of parapsychology at the university. Now, are they all idiots? Yes, they are. That's all a lot of bunk. I see. Well, you can stick your head in the sand, but you can't make these things disappear. I could take you off this assignment. But you won't. Not until I've checked out all the facts. And I think it's time I go and have a good look at the Institute of Psychic Research. I told you you wouldn't get him to change his mind. Rita, he would not budge. I mean, I have never met anybody who is so close to new ideas. Well, you know what happens to people with an open mind. Garbage falls into it. Yeah, well, if anybody wants me, I'll be picking up some garbage at the Psychic Research Institute. Julie was trying to reach you. She's at the Psychic Research Institute. Julie? Well, how come? Checking out the Kirkwood story, too. But you have to admit that there is a lot of fraud in the psychic field, Dr. Polarski. Oh, of course there is. And also much that warrants investigation. Like the ghost up at Kirkwood? Well, now, how did you find out about that? The cook quit and needed money, so she contacted the register. They knew I was working on a story about hauntings, so they turned her over to me. Well, I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to talk about it. Mrs. Kirkwood has requested no publicity. Look, Dr. Polarski, now there's a lot of bad press on so-called psychic phenomena. You have an incredible track record in ghost hunting. I may not believe it completely, but if you can prove it to me, I'll back you in the article. Something as big as the ghost of a well-known figure like Harvey Kirkwood could clinch it. You're a very persuasive young lady, Miss Masters. But I'm afraid my answer is still no. It would cause me to break faith with my client. And you wouldn't want to put me in that position, would you? You have to have an appointment, and the doctor's booked up through next week. That's all right, Mary. I know Mr. Parker. Hi, Peter. And now, how did your photos turn out? Well, there was some evidence of light forms, but nothing concrete. Well, could you send me some copies? I could use them for the file. Well, sure, I'd be delighted. Yeah. Doctor, do you keep files on all of your cases here? I'd be very interested to know how you operate an institution like this. Well, we're mainly a non-profit organization. Our funding comes from donations, research grant now and then. Everything is open here. You are quite welcome to look at our books. Thank you. I'd like to do that. Well, let me see, then. <clears throat> yes, uh, you might find these uh, duplicate files to be interesting. They explain my work much more eloquently than I could. Take them and uh, study them at your leisure. Thank you. Oh, might I suggest, Miss Masters, that you join Mr. Parker? You'll find quite a few fascinating cases there for your article. Thank you. 
Well, go ahead, take some. What? Seen a ghost? Here's a guy who died about a year ago, and he left his trust to Polarski in the Institute. Are you suggesting Polarski might have knocked the guy off? No, he had a history of heart trouble. His death was expected. Well, what is it, then? Well, it's just so similar to Lisa Kirkwood's situation. The will, the living trust. The idea could have been planted. It... Well, it's probably nothing. I need something real. I've got to get up to Kirkwood, but Mrs. Kirkwood won't see me. No, she doesn't like reporters. But I've got to tell you, I am less concerned with the story than protecting her. How? I don't know. Our situation has improved. We have closed the merger with Simpson Jennings Steel. And I am pleased to report a 10% rise in profits in the first quarter. Play that tape so much, I'm sick of his voice. I have to keep in shape. I'm pleased to report a 10% rise in profits in the first quarter. We were lucky he was so public. No, my friend, we were lucky he had that accident. I couldn't have planned it any better. Everything's ready. I planted the device in the library. You're sure no one saw you? I'm sure. Now, what about Parker, Doctor? I thought you said he couldn't survive your ultrasound treatment. I don't know how he did. But if all goes well tomorrow, it won't matter. Are you positive she'll sign? The lawyers are already preparing the documents. Then I think it would be appropriate if Mrs. Kirkwood joined her lately departed husband via a similar accident. Kirkwood called. She said it was urgent. You go right ahead, Miss Parker. Missus told me you were all right for a newspaper, then. <laughs> now, you know about staying away from the animals. Sure do. Right. to me if I could just explain that I'm not trying to give her bad publicity. Sorry, no chance. Look, doesn't she want to kill all the rumors about hauntings and ghosts and... Well, to be honest, about her being so upset that she's behaving irrationally. She says she wants no part of no news people, period, and that's it. <laughs> I'm so glad you could come before dark. What's happened? I'll show you. Baron, come on. Baron, come on. Baron, Baron, it's all right. Come on. You see, I can't get him into the room. Here, let me try. Here's a good boy. Come on, Baron. Come on in the room. Come on, boy. Here, Baron, come here. What's the matter with you, Baron? Come here. Now, come on. Over here, boy. Come on. In here, Baron. Come in here. Well, there are lots of reasons why a dog might be afraid of coming into a room. Uh, he could have been beaten in it once. Of course. I'm concerned about that, too. Well, the theory is that animals are more sensitive to spirits. So, in other words, Doctor, it's your theory that the ghost is settled in this room? That's right. 
I think we should discount the dog unless we can verify it. How? We could try an experiment with one of the animals from the estate. Well, there's no possible way that the animal could have been in the library. You mean bring one of the wild animals from outside into the house? In a cage. starting to get dark. Well, if there are no objections, I'll make the arrangements. Oh, please do. I'd like to put this to rest once and for all. Doctor, how long will it take you to get set up? Ooh, half hour, I guess. I'll be back. <laughs> that in a few more seconds, you would have been that bear's dinner. How do you always manage to be in the right place at the right time? Stay away from here. It's too dangerous. Look, Spider-Man, I'm very grateful for your help, but I know something is going on up at that mansion. I have to get up there. Don't be a fool. Go away.
not coming out of the cage. Something bothering you, Mr. Parker? It shouldn't, but it does. Well, I don't create these situations. I either prove or disprove them. Well, maybe we should try this experiment in another room. The experiment is sufficient as it stands. I'm not satisfied. I don't have to satisfy you. I've seen enough. Thank you for your concern, Peter, but I think you should leave now. All right, Mrs. Kirkwood. If the documents are ready, I no longer have any doubts. I'll do whatever Harvey wishes. of a very difficult time. All right. Comfort, contentment, and happiness. I'd settle for peace of mind. Lisa, can you hear me? Lisa. Good night, Mrs. Kirkwood. Didn't... Didn't you hear Harvey's voice just now? Harvey? Lisa, come to me, please. You must have heard that. Just now, again. I'm sorry. Going mad. Of course not, Mrs. Kirkwood. Often a message is directed to 
And can it only be heard by one person? Lisa, can you hear me? Lisa. Are you all right? Lisa, come to the garden. I feel so strange. Would you like me to call a doctor? No. I must go. doing here? What's bugging you? Why shouldn't I be here? Look, there are times when a story is not the most important thing in the world. Particularly when you've got it and I'm trying to get it. Anything I get, I will share with you. I just don't want you to get hurt. How? By whom? I think Lisa Kirkwood's in danger. Where is she? The house is a couple hundred yards that way. Why don't you go call the police? I'll see if I can find her. She's on her way. All right. <coughs> Sounds like our pussycat's ready. <coughs> as you're told and you won't get hurt. Stand perfectly still. Lisa.
White House. Don't worry, I'll have you untied in a moment. Now, this is how they did it. When the cougar tried to come to the opening, he was forced back by an electric charge. Your dog was kept out of the room by high-frequency sounds that humans can't hear. learn to imitate your husband's voice. I found stereo speakers concealed in the room. I've been such a fool. You wanted to believe, and they made it easy for you. I think it's time I left Kirkwood. I'd like to travel for a while. That sounds like a terrific idea. What about the trust? I'll change the will, of course. Charity will get it. It's what Harvey really wanted. things in a newspaper. What's so, so fascinating about old coins anyway? Well, not much to me, but maybe to a collector. Yeah. This was given to me by an old acquaintance of mine, uh, Weldon Gray. Have you ever heard of him? He's a rare coin dealer, right? He just bought five of the rarest coins in the world at an auction in London for $800,000. <sighs> well, that's a little out of my price range. He's given me an exclusive to come over and photograph the coins. 
I thought we might make a feature story of it. And you want me to cover it? That's the general idea. Get over there. One way or another, I've been fascinated with coins since I was a small boy. These don't mean much to you, do they, Mr. Parker? Anytime somebody spends close to a million dollars for a handful of change, I'm impressed. Well, it's not just the dollar value here. There's excitement, mystery, romance. If I was wealthy enough, I would never sell any of these coins. I'd keep them all for myself. Most collectors get caught up like that, I guess. Well, it's not just the collecting. I fall in love with each coin. With some men, it's painting. With other men, it's money. Of course, with others, it's beautiful women. I certainly don't discount beautiful women. That's my wife. My ex-wife, unfortunately. Yes, well, maybe you could give me a little of the history of these coins. Of course. This one here was minted in 1913. It's one of only four that were produced in error by the U.S. Mint. The other three were just... What's the matter? Nothing. I thought I heard it. A... Locked that door myself, and I'm the only one who has a key. Don't move. Now turn your back. Don't look around if you want to stay alive. I get the safe. It was broad daylight. You had to see something. Just before I was hit, I saw that wall over there. You can check that out. Peter, how about you? I saw the same wall and then a terrific view of the floor. Look, if I had any information about the theft of $800,000 worth of coins, don't you think I'd tell you? Are you insured? What's that got to do with anything? Probably nothing. You saw a hand and a gun. You heard a voice. And then the voice was muffled. This is supposed to be an ordinary rob. Why would an ordinary thief disguise his voice? Or hers? Afraid, maybe, that they might be recognized? A high lieutenant room for one more in here? Yeah, let her in. How did you beat me here? News of the robbery just came over the ticker. Yeah. You're Julie Masters. I remember you. You covered a coin show that I lectured at once. Mr. Parker was here when the robbery occurred. They knocked him out. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. I just uh, shouldn't nod my head. It might fall off. Oh, well, don't let that happen. You may need it again. Okay, Julie, go ahead and take your pictures. I uh, have an investigation to conduct. Right. Did you get anything with your camera? Nothing that I think you can use. I may have gotten one picture of the gun in the hand. I want it. I want all the pictures you took. Something might show up. All right, I'll process the film and get you some prints. I'll be at the paper to pick them up. Five rare coins were stolen. How would a thief dispose of the coins? Any collector would buy them. That's a big help. Okay, Pete, get on those prints. I haven't got much else to go with. Come here. I'll have them for you in one hour. Everything on the desk. How you doing? Maybe too well. Come again? I won't be sure until I run off prints, but the negative show I took a picture I never took. You know you're not making much sense. Yeah, well, neither does this extra frame of film. It appears to be a picture of a lady holding a gun. Hey, maybe that door was open a little extra, and you got a picture of the lady who was about to belt you into dreamland. No, I would have seen her. And I don't get it. What does she look like? I won't know that until I have a print of the picture. Well, it'll, it'll be good news for the gendarmes. The lieutenant is in with Jameson. And one of his troops is waiting outside the door here to pick up your evidence. Don't tell them about the extra frame of film. Peter, you're going to hold out on the cops and not tell them about it? I am not satisfied with how this picture got on my roll of film. Yeah, but you're sticking your neck out for a lady. You don't know. You don't even know where she
what she looks like. It's not the lady, and it's not me personally. Somebody is trying to use my job as a newsman to pull a fast one. How? I don't know. I And I don't want you to know what I'm going to do. I, I just don't want you involved in this. Okay. But you're asking for trouble, Peter. Being in trouble all by yourself is a lonely place to be. How's Flash doing? Coming along. Coming along. What gives? He's still in there. I guess it's taking him longer than he figured. Parker! What's taking you so long? He's in there. He couldn't get out without me seeing him. Okay, Peter, you better get your act together. We're coming in. He couldn't get out. While you were awake. I went to the water cooler, but I kept my eye on the door. Sure. Whatever game Pete's playing, I set the rules and he's broken them. He cut out of here, taking his film with him. That film is evidence in a felony. I hope the prison newspaper can use a good photographer. Not exactly flattering. As it happens, it is not me. So I guess I shouldn't complain. Are you sure? Would you know the difference if somebody faked a picture of you? Yes, I suppose I would, but... That is a very, very good likeness. It looks as though someone tried very hard to make it a good likeness, for whatever reason. I was about to have coffee. Would you join me? Where were you at 10.30 this morning? I was here. Can you prove that? I was alone. The reason I ask is because it was exactly at that time that your husband was robbed of some coins worth $800,000. Losing coins would hurt him terribly. Coins to me were simple things that nice people left me for my smiling when I served them coffee. And wish them a nice day. Please, sit down. Coins were kind of uh, happy thank yous. He treated them as though they meant more than people. I was taking pictures just before the robbery. When I developed my film, that one was the last one on the roll. I didn't take it. I don't understand. Is somebody trying to frame me? No, it certainly looks like that, doesn't it? Yes, I guess so, but who? Why? Are you sure this is for real? Then why aren't the cops breathing down my neck? Because I didn't give them that picture. Thanks. But you have to, don't you? Well, just let me handle that. Now, Mrs. Gray, how do you get along with your ex-husband? I still like him, but not as a husband. Does he like you? I'm just asking because I want to find out who would try to frame you. Well, we had problems in our marriage. He didn't want the divorce. We had a couple of large fights, but they blew over when he realized I wasn't going to stay on display like one of his rare coins. Okay, well, do you know anybody at all who is about your size and knows you well enough to be able to duplicate your hair and your clothes and who hates you. I never thought I did anything to make anybody hate me. But I guess I'm wrong. I don't have any answers. I'm sorry. Don't 
don't try to throw your weight around with me, Lieutenant. I can only assume that Peter Parker had some very good reason for leaving when he did. All right. I'll keep you advised of any further developments. Well, that covered for you. I am not giving him the pictures. Turning over those prints could do somebody a lot of damage. Not turning them over can definitely do you a lot of damage. At least I'll have you in front of a judge in no time. When you know what'll happen? When I refuse to hand them over, I'll be held in contempt of court. That's right. And slammed in the slammer. Look, someone is trying to use me to frame another person in this coin robbery. Who? I can't tell you that. I mean, right now, you could honestly tell a judge that you have no information about this. But if I tell you, you'll either have to reveal what I say, or you could face contempt charges, too. Well, you're willing to risk a jail sentence? Well, you're joining me in jail isn't going to help. I don't have any choice. Not if I intend to back up something I believe very strongly in. That a newsman should be protected by the First Amendment. I stick to the old-fashioned idea that newspaper people are honor-bound to protect their sources. And they use their judgment in releasing any information they've gathered. I'll back you all the way. being called out of my court for the trial in session. Even without this interruption, my calendar is very tight. Please keep in mind I can give you five minutes at the most. Your Honor, Peter Parker is an honorable and honest man. Forcing him to go to jail is a mockery of justice and an attack upon the freedom of the press. It's ridiculous to treat a man as a criminal for doing a job that's vital to society. Your attorneys have already made those points, Mr. Jameson. I'm making them again, Your Honor, because I feel very strongly about them. You're wasting my time. Well, at least Brad has a stay so that we can pursue other legal remedies. Mr. Parker is in contempt of court. He can remain free if he provides the material which has been subpoenaed. Failing that, he will accompany the bailiff for immediate processing and incarceration. This hearing is at an end. All right, let's get the ground rules set. Now, you're a newspaper fan, so you really think that makes you important. It's never made me important before. I don't know why I wouldn't jail. Well, then here you're just the same as everybody else. You get out of line, you get the book thrown at you. Somehow I get the feeling that newsmen are not your favorite people in the world. Did you ever read a story about a nice prison guard? I don't remember. Maybe we could start a new trend. muscles where you should use brain. I don't see you using your brains to bend this thing. Yes, I did. I used me brains to get you to use your muscles. You know, one of these days, I'm going to bat your brains down into your belly. Oh, no threats, lad. It's sort of a team. We're on a win and run. You wouldn't want to spoil it. on time. Watch me handle him. Did an excellent job. Don't seem like you did. See nothing in the newspapers about your ex-missus being clapped in the dungeon for stealing them coins. That was a fault of that newspaper photographer. I'll handle that another way. Good. I'd hate to waste my star in performance. I'd like to talk about me, Alimony. Take that thing off, you fool. Somebody will see you. Keep your hair on, Dolly Boy. There's no one around here. I told you to get rid of that and the clothes. Did you know? Must have slipped me mine. Remember anything about that, Wiley? Nothing. I never just remember nothing when money's involved. Blackmail. 
Well, it won't work. You guys will get nailed, too. Call it insurance. Anything went wrong, the coppers might get a package with claws and hair. Now, me and Wiley, we'd be long gone. But you, now you got roots. You stay in one place, and you'd be right here to answer them penetrating questions the coppers love to ask. We had a deal. You welshin' on it? Would I do that? I'm just waiting here, quiet and peaceful, till Wiley and me get our money. When I get it, you'll get it. Oh, that's nice. In the meantime, let me have the coins. Coins? They're mine. I want them. Oh, yeah, them, sure. You'll get them, absolutely. Right, Wiley? Where he says something, I always believe him. You better, too. As soon as that money is in my hand, this hand, right here, where I can look at it, count it, and enjoy it. The deal was, you give me the coins when the robbery's completed. We decided to hold on to them. I need one coin to do the job that the photographer didn't do. You can keep the other four. Out of the goodness of me heart and because I'm a trusting man. Should I go get one? Not that trusting. You don't go near that stash while he's here to have a look-see. But we'll get him in your hot little hands, quick like. Good. That visiting hours with the press interviewing prisoners manages to get special privileges. Nice of you to visit. Peter, it's awful. Well, like the guard told me, have you ever seen a nice jail? <laughs> no. It just seems a lot different when you're not involved. It's not the jail seeing you in it. Okay, so it's not the Waldorf. <laughs> well, I wouldn't visit you if this was the Waldorf. <laughs> After all, I only came here to research the psychology of hardened criminals like you. Well, actually, I'm still just kind of an apprentice criminal. I'm just learning the trade. I'll study and work hard. That's the way to success. So, did you just come here to encourage me in my life of crime? No. I came here to tell you that the coin robbery that got you in here may be close to solution, so you might get out fairly soon. Give. Okay. The lieutenant managed to squeeze some information out of Mr. Gray. And now there's a prime suspect, Bonita Gray. No. I know she didn't do it. But I do have to talk to her. Well, wouldn't that bring more suspicion on her? You're in here for not producing evidence. I mean, the police would think the evidence related to her. Did it? Never mind. But you've got a point about the police. I've got to find out... What? ...the angle at which a photograph was taken. Well, I can ask your boss to get the lawyers to make another attempt to get you out of here for long enough to see her. It's a slim chance. Try it, would you? Right now? Peter, really? Are you okay? I hate to see you in here. Yeah, well... I'm not too crazy about it myself. Guard! I think you're a terrific guy. Don't put him on bread and water. We treat everybody the same. He's kind of a nice guy. In here, he's not a guy. He's a number. Shut a lady out. shouldn't be seen in my office. Me mom lets me come and go in the big city all by myself. Simmer down. Nobody knows me. Don't go out of your way to irritate me. You don't have that gorilla friend with you now, and I might just decide to take you apart in order to get those other coins. 
Well, you wouldn't want to do that, would you? Seeing as we got such a gentleman's agreement. <laughs> So a few pennies were new and so many dollars now. Did you know I've got gypsy blood in my veins? I'll read you a piece of the future. This little beauty will be found in the possession of Mrs. Gray what was. As if it was any of your business. Why are you so anxious to pin it on her? She's nothing. She was in a sleazy cafe serving over a filthy counter when I first met her. I made her Mrs. Weldon Gray. Then she left. She walked out on me. Shocking. Imagine somebody not wanting to stay with a lovable gentleman like you. Get out. <laughs> I'll meet you next when I deliver the insurance. Spider-Man, and I didn't believe it. Now I've seen him, and I still don't believe it. Well, I gotta look at his face. Well, better you than me. He was probably furry with six eyes. Don't be a fool. I would swear that was Peter Parker. Now, would you say that's good or bad? Gives me a chance to get rid of Spider-Man before he interferes further. Now, that ain't all bad. Once I've taken care of my ex-wife... Lieutenant, if I had anything hidden, I know that your men would find it. I would give it to you before you tore my place apart. Sure. When Christmas comes on the first and third Sundays of every month. I read the search warrant. I guess I can thank my ex-husband. I never would have figured he'd go this route. Just for the record, Mrs. Gray, he's busting his butt to protect you. He didn't volunteer the information that you have the keys to his office. Okay. He's a nice guy. I don't even know where the keys are. Anyway, you are not looking for keys. That's right. We have certain information, maybe wrong information, that makes the search seem like a good idea. Of course, you're sure we won't find anything. Lieutenant, I have not been sure of anything since I was 15 years old, and I'm not about to tell you how long ago that. Lieutenant. Tape to the bottom of a drawer. Recognize this, Mrs. Gray? Would you believe me if I said I have never seen it before? No. Look around. There's four more of these somewhere. I'm afraid we're going to have to ask you to come downtown. Anything you say may be used as evidence against you. You're not required to answer any questions or make any comments. You're entitled to the services of an attorney. The way I'm being set up, I don't think an attorney would do me any good. Let's go. 
I'd like to say I admire your photographer. What's his name? Peter Parker. Parker's ethical stand on not revealing information, although it probably worked to my disadvantage. Well, if he'd known who committed the robbery, he certainly would have. He'd have passed on the information. Well, as a matter of fact, the robbery's been solved. I couldn't believe it, but the police have an airtight case against my former wife. They found a coin in her apartment. Only one? She had Confederates. They have the other. How do you know? Well, let's say I have reason to believe it. Come on. You can do better than that. Off the record? Of course. I won't print a word without your permission. Well, I've been contacted to buy back the other four coins. Have you told the police? Yeah, of course not. The important thing now is to get the coins back. I'm going to deliver $100,000 to the old Stimson warehouse in the Queens tomorrow morning by 7 o'clock. I consider that a bargain. Can I use the story in tomorrow's late edition? Not unless the police crack the case first. There's always the possibility that my wife will identify her partners. I hope she does. That way, I'll get my 100000 back. Why are you telling me all this? Once the case is solved, Parker will be let out of jail. I told you I admire him. I'd like him to have this story, if that's possible. His ex-wife has been arrested. The police found one of the coins in her possession. What happened to the other four? Ray's buying them back tomorrow morning at 7 at Stimson's warehouse. A police trap? No, this is off-the-record information. Ray doesn't want the police to know for fear he might not get his coins back. He shouldn't have told you that. That puts you in the same spot I'm in. That's a risk I'm prepared to take. In fact, I don't know any way of running a newspaper without taking that risk. Look, do you think there's any chance you might be able to get me out of here before any more legal appeals? We're working on it. With any luck, we should have some news tomorrow. Yeah, by that time, Gray will have his four coins, and Mrs. Gray will have a conviction for armed robbery. You sound as if you don't believe she did it. I don't. Well, I'll keep pressuring the Bugles lawyers to get you out of here as quickly as they can. You'll hear from me tomorrow. Okay, six o'clock, eating time. Oh, looks delicious. Why not running a gourmet restaurant? Ah, uh, listen, it's not bad once you get used to it. When you finish up, slide your tray under the door, and I'll come back later and pick it up, all right? Thanks.
Peter Parker, Spider-Man. How did that help us? Somehow he's escaped from jail without the police knowing. Get to a phone. Make an anonymous call that Parker's escaped. There's no phone here. I don't need you to tell me that. Haven't you ever heard of a public phone? Go to a supermarket or a gas station. Now, move! Go on. He hasn't escaped. What? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. First you tell me that he got out of his cell, now you tell me you want me to let him out? Oh. Oh, he's being released for 24 hours. Okay. His cell will be waiting for him when he gets back tomorrow. What's the matter with your leg? Oh, I just twisted my ankle. It's no big deal. I had to pull every string to get you even 24 hours. The lawyers aren't at all sure that they can get the courts to void that contempt citation. Well, if I can't get this whole thing cleared up in 24 hours, Benita Gray is going to be in a lot of trouble. What are you going to do? I want the Bugle to print a special edition. Do you realize what that would cost? I just need one copy of one paper dated tomorrow. What do you want me to do? You know Mr. Gray's coins that were supposedly stolen? Mm-hmm. Find out who insured them. That's easy. Then I want you to do an impersonation. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Wait a minute. What are you doing with my phone? Using it. Hi, Julie. This is Peter. Hi. Look, I need your help. Say what? I want somebody to think that the press is working on a story, and I don't want it to look like it's just coming from the bugle. Is it a legit story? I'll tell you all about it tomorrow morning. Now, you just act like a nosy reporter from the register. I think you know how to do that. It'll give it much more authenticity if the story's being investigated by more than one newspaper. OK. I'll hang in tomorrow until you call. OK. Bye-bye.
Holden Gray here. Mr. Gray, this is Miss Conrad, Adjustment Department, Arm Brewster Insurance Company. There seems to be some question as to the authenticity of the coins for which you filed a claim. No, no, there is no question. I bought the coins myself. They were examined thoroughly before they were stolen. They're absolutely authentic. I'm sorry, Mr. Gray, but the story is all over the newspapers, and it'll probably be on the TV news. We'll be forced to hold up payment on your claim until we get conclusive evidence that we are not being penalized financially for the theft of worthless coins. Congress to approve the income tax cut must be considered the top story of this morning. In other news, the police announced that they have released Bonita Gray, former wife of coin dealer Weldon Gray. The coin, which was thought to be evidence in the robbery of her former husband, has proved to be a counterfeit, and the case against Mrs. Gray has been dropped. In other news, the Child Abuse Prevention Center... Remember me, Mr. Gray. I'm Julie Masters with the Register. Do you have any comment on the police report that the coins stolen from you were counterfeit? They weren't. And I have no further comment. Now. How do you explain the fact that the only one found by police was definitely counterfeit? No comment. It'll be my pleasure if you have the money. Take a look at that. Well, ain't that the strangest thing ever I've seen? Get me the other coins. Like I said, I'm a trusting man, but it looks to me like you switched the coin I gave you and planted a counterfeit. Oh, come on. Don't you think the cops know the difference between a counterfeit coin and a real one? He's got no reason to plant a counterfeit. His wife's off the hook. Then what do you suppose happened? I don't know, but I want to make sure the other four coins are real. Shall I get them? As soon as we arrange, Mr. Gray doesn't see where the stash is. Oh, come on. I don't have time to waste. Oh, really? Well, maybe you can find time if you have no choice. You get off the ship and you wait in the dark. Why? Because I don't want you looking and snooping. All right, buddy boy. I'll get the pretties now. Spider-Man. 
Now, there's your evidence, Lieutenant. This right. is Peter Parker said it. All right, me. fish that man out of the water and get that guy out of the boat. Looks like your man called it this time. Yes, it looks as though he did. Boy, am I glad to see you, you Lieutenant. Some lunatic threw me in the boat. Lieutenant. Book him. Where's Peter Parker? If those men did anything to him... Did you get the evidence? Yes, we got the evidence, all right. And those men are getting prison sentences. And I see the registers getting pictures of all this. What's the bugle getting? I guess I got here a little too late to take any. No, Peter, you have half the pictures I have. I wouldn't have any if it weren't for you. Well, that leaves me with nothing to complain about. Come on, I'll drive you back to town. No, I've got my car. I'll take Julie. 